to global community, protecting our planet. I'm Jesse Mitchell, and I'm here at Riverbank State Park where city and scenic collide. In the hustle and bustle of daily life, it's easy to forget the wild animals we live among and the impact we have on them. Every day across the globe, natural habitats grow smaller as developing countries adapt to modernization. I took a trip to Tanzania, where the government is looking to the future by protecting a third of its land. In the Ngorogoro Crater, most animals spend their entire lives inside these tall mountain walls. The breathtaking beauty of lake and jungle combined to create an oasis untouched by the modern world. Sorry, where are you going again? The simple roads carved out by elephants ages ago. But as the mountain moves seamlessly into the savanna of the Serengeti, even those at the top of the food chain still have to beware. Despite best efforts to patrol for poachers, black market demand prevails and big game hunting remains legal in certain areas for older male animals no longer able to mate. Veteran safari guide Otto Melanda learned to track animals from his uncle, who still leads tourists on hunts. I just wanted me to train to become a hunter. But Melanda found his livelihood and passion protecting the animals, sharing his excitement to observe with the tourists he serves. This time of the day, they're coming here to drink. He has to follow strict protocols, as do all licensed to work on government protected lands. Tent camps set up inside the Serengeti have to move within two years to avoid permanent damage to the landscape. On our quest, the elusive black rhino shows the impact humans have had. Today we don't see it because of the cultures fully granted. Some groups estimate fewer than a hundred wild rhinos exist in Tanzania today. No park boundaries means animals roam free, but so do poachers. Rangers remain on constant patrol. We have these rangers who are trying to protect the area from, you know, from all this. That's a hard job. Of course it is. It's a very, very difficult job, but they're trying their best. Extinction trends extend across the globe. And as species disappear, so does diversity. Dr. Analuz Porsikanski directs the American Museum of Natural History Center for Biodiversity and Conservation here in New York, where we met in the Hall of African Mammals. There were reports even 20 years ago showing this decline, and in the last few years there's been massive global reports as well showing that this decline is unprecedented, and it continues unabated. On the ground in Tanzania, the United Nations monitors the environment as well as the developing economy. UN resident coordinator Zlatan Milicic. We know that with climate change, things are not getting better, they're getting worse. It's happening everywhere. 70% of natural disasters in Tanzania are attributed to climate change. In 2016, the UN budgeted $1.7 billion towards 17 sustainable development goals for Tanzania, which focus on supporting the climate and life, both human and animal. The investments aim to one day eradicate poverty and hunger and eliminate the driving factors of poaching. A recent donation of 10 trucks will help cover identified hotspots. I don't have a crystal ball, but we will certainly be there to support ways of economic progress and prosperity and development, which is not harmful to the environment. With protections in place, beloved animals can continue to grace these wild spaces for generations to come. Water makes up 70% of our planet, but the resource that feeds life seems to grow scarcer each day. Riverbank State Park was built on top of a wastewater treatment facility, contributing to the fine balance of fresh water and fresh air, feeding the habitat of the Hudson River. As the climate crisis dries up our environments, I'll show you how Tanzania is handling some of the same challenges we face. Foraging and foraging paths through the forests of northern Tanzania's Tarangiri National Park. Experts search for the ultimate source of survival. They know exactly when we dig, we get water, how far water is, then, then they dig. Mm, so they can smell how deep it is? Yep. Wow. Yep. Safari guide Otto Melanda has been tracking these herds for two decades. Led by maternal elders, elephant families follow maps from memory to find an increasingly scarce resource. The past two years, two seasons, was not that good, but the last one was very bad. 
Many animals, like the hippo, rely on these naturally occurring shallow pools to stay hydrated and keep cool during the heat. But with less rain coming to Tanzania this year, there's a fight to find space. More than 100 hippos packed into this pond to soak under the sun. Limited locations bringing together even seeming enemies. Crocodiles creep as close as they can. When it's flowing down, it's good life. During the dry season, teams conduct controlled burns to prevent wildfires in the vast grasses of the Serengeti. No other man-made measures protect wildlife with a thirst to survive. Rain brings relief. Rivulets turn to rivers, nourishing land and lives to thrive. But there's one place where water always stays. As a safari guide, Malanda soaks in all the best views. At daybreak, he brought meat to the top of the jungle, the so-called lungs of northern Tanzania. Morning in the mountains, you can see the trees releasing this water vapor, vital oxygen for people here to breathe, further showing the importance of the conservation efforts here. The mist gives way to reveal one of the most idyllic animal sanctuaries on the planet. The ancient volcanic caldera cradles a year-round supply for animals to enjoy. Most will never leave the mountain in their lifetime. But even here, dry scars mark where water once ran. A need mirrored in New York City, where winter snow totals fall two feet short of average. That's where I met Dr. Anneluz Porsikanski, director of the American Museum of Natural History's Center for Biodiversity and Conservation. The last 50 years, we have caused really an unprecedented decline in biodiversity. While wildlife relies on water flowing naturally, the United Nations steps in to help the Tanzanian government achieve sustainable development for tribes when the supply runs dry. UN resident coordinator Zlatan Milicic oversees efforts important for the entire country. Some 60 percent of the population grow food directly and another 20 percent of their livelihoods are connected to food. The partnership recently produced new running water latrines to prevent the spread of disease for school children. There is this, this fine balance in any country between how do you progress in economic terms while at the same time kind of leaving no one behind. Mother Nature knows no boundaries. A sustainable society for the future involves us all. May we all be united by water action. The UN hosted its water conference in New York in March to brainstorm more solutions. Humans need not only the, the water itself, but the ecosystems that keep that water usable and recycling it all the time. We need those to survive, even in the cities. <laughs> Reflect on the depths of our most powerful resource. The tug of war between progress and preservation is one of civilization's oldest challenges, even seen today here in New York City. Solutions like building a park on top of a wastewater treatment facility remind us how far we've come and the lessons we've learned. I took a look at the ways countries like Tanzania can develop opportunities for people while protecting wild spaces. No worries remains the real life motto in the land of the Lion King. While Timon and Pumbaa roam on protected government property, Tanzanian people living in poverty get creative to make ends meet. Yeah, it up. Safari guide Otto Melanda says humans here learn a lot from the lion about the importance of partnership. They put everything together, the effort together to get something, and once they get something, they share. Spice tours on Tanzania's island of Zanzibar show how so locals utilize every natural resource available. It's like a Local like bandage. Bandaid, yeah. Or plaster. So after a few days, the wound is closed. Some of these men might make a dollar a day, depending on tips from tourists and sharing what they need hey, with hey. each other. They lose it on a fight. On the mainland, the road to the Serengeti remains paved by nature, but animals aren't the only inhabitants. Hillsides dotted by huts mark where members of the Maasai tribe live with their own cattle alongside wild herds helping patrol for poachers. This unique allowance shows one of many efforts underway to solve the problems of today. They are employed by the government. And our government is trying to give them a lot of the money, a lot of accessories. Summer 2022 marked the start of a five-year sustainable development plan to achieve 17 goals identified by the United Nations, focusing on conserving the landscape, enabling healthier lives, and strengthening livelihoods.
UN resident coordinator Zlatan Milicic says Tanzania has already made farther advancements in these commitments than neighboring countries. Uh, this is one of the governments on the continent which is really investing uh, visible resources to some sort of social economic uh, development of the communities. Women collecting seaweed on the shores of Zanzibar show one example of enhanced gender inclusivity in the workforce. Opening opportunities for girls of the next generation is among the top priorities. While a stable society allows for these advances, Tanzania's tourism drives the efforts and the entire economy. Industrialization is important and needed, but it doesn't come without certain costs especially costs to the environment. Alicia says 70% of recent natural disasters in Tanzania were caused by climate change. That's why activists around the world are working to find new ways to solve this global crisis. Payment referrals for countries that are uh, hit by climate disasters or um, you know payments for losses and damages that are being discussed from richer countries to poorer countries. These are really important new ways of thinking. Dr. Anneluz Porsikansky directs the American Museum of Natural History Center for Biodiversity and Conservation, which encourages visitors to care about their impact on animals. When we talked about herds, we used to think about these kinds of herds, but now we think about ourselves, humans as herds, and I think the ultimate herd immunity really comes from addressing social development, health, and environmental concerns together. Building a future involves all of us just as these wild landscapes support life in so many ways. But something that a lot of Americans come and see and visit, and they're also part of our culture. So uh, why not protect it? It's much cheaper than many other things that we are investing our resources in. Protecting the planet as a global community. And that's the message I hope you take with you on your daily journey. Remember the impact you can have. Thanks for joining me. From Riverbank State Park in Harlem, I'm Jesse Mitchell for CBS News, New York.